get your attention, please. Woo! Yo, yo. You ready for this? Coming at you from Wicked Big Studios in Peabody, Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen. Sit back. Buckle up. Because you're in the happy hour with your boy. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Happy Hour, guys. I'm glad to have you back. I know everybody really enjoyed last week's show, and I appreciate the feedback, guys. It was awesome. Also, Wednesday night on the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Network, 7 o'clock, guys. It, I mean, another fantastic show, and I'll tell you, everybody that's coming onto the Twitch site, we're really having a great time, guys, and... Uh, this you'll I mean we have a lot of really good things coming your way. I want to give you a couple quick housekeeping notes, guys. Uh, I mean basically all the orders that came in in the last two weeks for swag have been shipped. So check your mailbox if you haven't got them yet. Big D went to the mailbox, and I mean it, truthfully we were swamped, and I appreciate it, guys. I can't thank you so. I mean I can't thank you enough for all the support. Our show today is being brought to you by Overlay DFS, ladies and gentlemen, the pinnacle in daily fantasy sports betting. I will tell you guys if you want to get over to Overlay DFS, the matchup shop is one of a kind in the industry and I'll tell you they are fantastic to us they love the happy hour social club and I'll tell you I I love them they are fantastic to us so if you could guys get over to overlay daily fantasy sports go ahead I mean big D won himself big D won himself two two thousand dollars and you know that guy he's he, he can't pick he can't pick his nose I'll tell you though we're here it's 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 you know the new year and like I said it's the second installment of the new year new me series and I'll tell you last week Mariah Mahara was a fantastic guest but today I got out. We are definitely going out, uh, barking up a different tree. And what I got, what I, truthfully, guys, what I'm, I got to bring to you today, I mean, this gentleman is, uh, truthfully, 18 years of learning, a PhD in exercise physiology. This man has a Bachelor of Science and, uh, I mean, also a master's degree in biomed. This man is, I mean, truthfully, has all the knowledge that we need when we're making our, you know, New Year's resolutions going forward. I mean, this man's also an author. Welcome to the show, Dr. Mike T. Nelson. Good to have you, big man. Yeah, thank you very much for having me here. I really appreciate it. I, 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 you know, I, I, truthfully, truth be told, uh, Dr. Mike T. Nelson, ladies and gentlemen, is actually a co-host and uh, on every week on uh, Iron Radio, which was the very first podcast I ever downloaded. I don't know if you know that, uh, oh, Dr. Wow. Mike. That's, That's the, wild. <laughs> uh, every, Honored. Absolutely, and I'll tell you. Uh, uh, Coach Phil, Coach Phil's been on the show before, and I, uh, you know, everyone right. loved his show. And uh, you know, you and him will have definitely have two different views, you know, coming from different ends of the spectrum. But you both actually have the same goal in mind. You know what I mean? Basically, fitness, health, and you know, basically getting jacked and getting healthy all at the same time. Am I right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what? What you? What for anyone that doesn't know, Doctor Mike T. Nelson, guys, you can follow him over on uh, Instagram. A lot of great, great content goes out there. That's uh, Doctor Mike T. Nelson on Instagram. And uh, I mean, basically, what it is is you. You basically are. The, I mean, pretty much through and through the flex diet. I mean, am I right here? Yes, that is correct. And if you, I mean, if you had to compare flex, the you know the flex diet with other diets, I know you do the certification, everything on your uh, website. Also, ladies and gentlemen, this man's a professor at the. Uh, I mean, you're a professor at the Kerrig Institute, and I mean, you're, you're just basically you're teaching a lot of people a lot of really good things. Can you tell us what the difference between the flex diet and other like fad diets, along you know things along these lines are? Yeah, it's kind of sort of the anti-fad diet. It, you know, how do you take I can say kind of sort of basic things and make them useful. So everything from, you know, how much protein, how much fat, how much carbohydrate, what should you do for exercise, uh, fasting, sleep. I'm trying to put all those different interventions into a system that people can use so that they're starting on the things that are going to drive the biggest change. And they know what to do with each one of those and how to approach it without feeling like they have to do whatever the latest and greatest fad diet is so that they can uh, do it for more of a long-term uh, approach without feeling like they have to completely redesign their entire life either. 
Absolutely. I mean, everybody who listens to the show knows I work under the legendary Mike Dolce for the Dolce Diet. Yeah. And um, I mean, truthfully, Mike Dolce is my boss, and I'll tell you, he's he's uh, he's he's an excellent guy. He teaches, and it seems like from my listening, you know, I, I've been uh, taking in your Flex Diet podcast. Also, you know, it seems like you're thank you're, you. Yeah, absolutely, my my man. And I'll tell you what, guys, his podcast is fantastic. You can also find that on iTunes, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go ahead and take a peek at that. And basically, what I like about and I'll and I'll throw this out there. I, what I like about your podcast is these are little tidbits I feel like that you can go ahead and, you know, if you are, you know, a personal trainer or a nutrition coach, you could take these little tidbits and actually use them as like a, I'd call it like a secondary opinion. You know, if, you know, because sometimes the people get comfortable and then they start quite well. Yeah, I mean, right here, you know, some people can look to that as even a glossary to go ahead and assist with their, uh, you know, their work, wouldn't you say? I mean, that would be a good way of putting that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the goal for the podcast is, you know, to educate people and to also make it practical and and useful because that's what's going to move the needle at the end of the day. Yep, yep. And uh, so 18 years of learning. Uh, how, how Now, here's my question to you. Number one, how do you go about 18 different, you know, 18 years of your life you've spent basically learning and studying and, I mean, uh, clearly, clearly, uh, I mean, extremely good student of the, uh, you know, the industry, but I mean, 18 years, I mean, how did you get started in, in fitness and all, uh, uh, I mean, was this back, you know, during a boom back in the day or is this something that you just kind of fell into? Uh, probably like most guys. I mean, I was, uh, six foot three in like ninth grade of high school and I graduated high school, you know, weighing still 156 pounds. So, Kind of like Phil would say, I was uh, the eel-shaped rake <laughs> person and thought, well, maybe I should start learning more about lifting. And uh, for my undergrad, I did a Bachelor of Arts in Natural Science. So I took anatomy and physiology and, you know, biology classes for fun and just started lifting along the way and, you know, kept wanting to learn more about it and ended up going to engineering and did some other things after that. But, you know, most of it was just initially I didn't, Plan to make a career out of it. I actually worked in a cardiovascular medical technology company for about 10 years before I transitioned full time into fitness. And like most guys, just, you know, trying to figure out what is the most effective way for lifting and nutrition and doing pretty much everything wrong for you know, <laughs> probably 10, 15, 15 years of my life. And then, you know, finally starting to figure some things out. I, 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 it's funny you say that because a lot of us, I mean, I was, yeah, yeah, prototypical meathead, lifting heavy, eating heavy, you know, I mean, for a long, long time. I mean, then, you know, like I, I was, you know, I was lucky enough to start working with my Dolce. And then, you know, basically now I realized, you know, you know, don't count calories, make calories count, you know, eat to your satisfy, mm -hmm. not to your full, things like this. And uh, truth be told, I mean, I made a lot of errors coming along the way, a ton. And I, you still see them today. So something like, you know, you flex diet or you know this is something that could really help somebody especially the people i mean it's january doctor you know and these people they're looking people are putting out their uh, new year's resolutions and a lot of people i mean with the pandemic they packed on the pandemic you know 20 pounds and you know they call it the covid 15 but it's gone on a little longer than anticipated so a lot of people have gone up above that threshold i mean you must see that in your uh, your clientele correct yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty lucky. Most of my clients are, at this point, a little bit more intermediate level. I mean, I definitely worked with general population for quite a while, and it is a lot harder, I think, now because access to gyms is more limited. People tend to move less by being inside. So it's not impossible, but I agree that it does make it a little bit more difficult now than even a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it also, with your 18 years of learning, just the, just the icing on the cake, ladies and gentlemen, right? Eight different, if I'm counting right, eight different certifications. Is that right? I mean, you have a, a slew of certifications to go along with. I mean, all these degrees that you have, right? Yeah, I did a bunch of different certifications along the way and did a Bachelor of Arts in Natural Science, a Master's in Mechanical Engineering, Biomechanics. I did five years actually in a PhD program in biomedical engineering and then ended up literally dropping out of that and then went over to exercise physiology, but unfortunately it was a completely different area within the University of Minnesota. And it took me seven years to finish my PhD in that. So yeah, I started when I was just turned 18 and I took about two years off and I 
finished when I was 38. <laughs> wow. That's, I mean, you, you really did. You really did go to school for an a, you know, extended period of time. And that's, I mean, truthfully, your client, your clientele must think that that's amazing. I, I, you know, one of the, back to the flex diet, one of the things, you know, I'm, yeah. I mean, the, the uh, metabolic, uh, so this is what I'm saying. Metabolic flexibility is something that you basically, you know, preach and, you know, mm -hmm. for anybody that doesn't really understand, I'm going to have you give them the good details on this one. But I mean, this is basically, you know, you're figuring out what your, your best source of energy is correct, where some people say fat, some people say carbohydrates. I mean, is that basically how, you know, you go about your uh, metabolic flexibility, you know, issues while you're uh, teaching your diet? Yeah. So, you know, like you're talking about fad diets, a lot of stuff in fitness is sort of avoiding certain things. You have to do a ketogenic type diet all the time because carbohydrates are bad. And I'm sure you've lived through the kind of low carb era, the high carb era. Now protein is potentially not so good. So it just depends upon what you're trying to do. So metabolic flexibility is on one end of the spectrum. How well can you use carbohydrates for energy? which is good, especially for, you know, interval work and going to the gym, lifting weights. And then on the other end of the spectrum, how well can you also use fat as a fuel? This can be body fat or just, you know, the fat that you consume from eating food, yep. which is better when you're doing lower intensity work or kind of just day-to-day, -day, you know, job if you have more of a sedentary type job. So both of them are important and both of them can be super useful. You just want the ability to use both but it depends upon what you're actually trying to do. And that makes it better because you can get a little bit better performance in the gym by using carbohydrates. And then if you can switch back to using fat outside of the gym, then it makes it a little bit easier for, you know, day-to-day -day energy and body composition. Yep, and one of the things that I always preach, and people, <laughs> people that are, you know they listen and they hear me preaching, you know, to them, you know, people that I speak with, the clients that I take, and one of the things I always say is that for uh, troubles, you know, trouble areas, you know, you know, guys, you know, abdominal fat, women, you know, the inner thigh, you know, uh, glutes. Uh, one of the things I always say is that uh, low intensity, low intensity, steady state cardio while in a fasted state is, you know, I think a uh, tremendous way to do it. So basically, you wake up in the morning, you can do like a half an hour low intensity walk. And then you save your high intensity work for when you are fueled by carbohydrates. I mean, is that kind of, I mean, you're kind of basically barking up the same tree as me, correct? Yeah, I'm definitely a, a big fan of that approach. I mean, especially in the morning for low intensity work, it's by definition low intensity. So you don't necessarily need carbohydrates to, to fuel that. Um, but on the other end of the spectrum, as you mentioned, when you're going to the gym, and you're lifting weights, you're doing something that has more intensity, then you definitely want the ability to use carbohydrates. So if anyone's ever done like an extremely low carbohydrate diet, um, you know, a lot of times your lifting performance and things in the gym will go down. Everything just feels heavier than what it was. So yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, and, and I, I'm the, I'm the same way. I've I've tried the, the the terribly low carbs, and you know, all down the line. I I have started to hear whispers that protein, you know, too much protein isn't good. And I actually just um, I'm I'm not finished with the book yet, but I've actually started the book uh, Proteinaholic, where they actually hmm. a gentleman who um a gentleman who used to be a used to do the lap band surgery and gastro bypass actually used to tell people to take the high protein diet and then they all gain their weight back from it. So he's actually somebody who's preaching protein is no good for you. I think hmm. truthfully the way that I always look at it and, and I mean, correct me if you think I'm wrong, cause you obviously have years and years and years of uh, expertise over me, but I think that everything is good in moderation. You know what I mean? I think all natural whole food sources, you take in your protein, you take in your carbs and, and truthfully, I, I mean the, the Mike Dolce way, he has, people say it's slogan, but don't count calories, make calories count. And I even mean that on an earned meal, which, you know, some people call it cheat meal. I, I disagree with that terminology. But when you have an earned meal where you, you know, go quite a while, you're hitting your gains, you're doing well, and then you go ahead off the deep end, you know, even then, you make those calories count. You get what you want, you enjoy it, you take away that craving, and then moving forward, you're ready to slam the gym again until that next earned meal. I mean, and you just try not to make it where you fantasize over that junk food that's kind of my goal but 
at the same time, I think you've taken as much, pro, you know, you've taken a good amount of protein, a good amount of carbohydrates, you know, always eating, you know, you know, definitely, you know, uh, leafy greens, you know, and, and vegetables. I mean, some people differ in there. You know, I had, um, I had, uh, the, you know, the keto queen was on the show, you know, a while back. Mm. Diane, she, you know, she's a lovely, lovely lady. She'd come on the show. We spoke about how good ke the ketogenic diet was and how it's changing people's lives. So different people do see different results, but I've never seen anybody that had bad results eating whole food sources, getting great, you know, great sourced food and taking in a proper amount. And, you know, like I said, eat until you're satisfied, not till you're full. Obviously, too much of anything is no good. I mean, you'd agree with me on that, doctor? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone wants to debate about is it quality of calories or is it quantity? And the answer is it, it's both, you know, because if you're eating higher quality foods that are more nutrient dense, that have fiber and micronutrition, it's you know, going to help you increase your satiety. So you're probably just going to automatically end up eating less of them too. So I think they're, they're both related. If you're eating a lot of processed food, I don't think that is necessarily bad, but it is very easy to overeat on that. And you're probably missing out on some of the nutrients that you need. You know, if you're a athlete and you can burn through 4,000 calories a day, yeah, you know, having a donut or two, probably not a big deal. But if you're not exercising that much and your job isn't to be a professional athlete, then you've got a lot less, you know, wiggle room there because your calories are going to be lower too. Yeah, I, I agree there, and I, I like I said, I don't. I try to stay away from anything processed. I mean, that's just that's just sure. my way. It's you know, in different. Like you said, I've been wrong a lot of times. Different things work for different people. I, I never understood the whole craze with the keto. I, I'm not sure about your views on that. I, I mean, I, when people tell me that they're eating pork rinds and pepperoni and butter, but don't you dare have five blueberries you know what i mean that, that just to me it's how could you even look me in the face and say that you can eat this, this this whole bag of pork rinds and this stick of pepperoni but don't you dare have that slice of watermelon i mean you you gotta think that's crazy right big man yeah i mean again like there's people who do a ketogenic diet i would say with pretty high food quality and there's people who do a ketogenic diet with very low food quality <laughs> yeah uh, and then it's still Technically, if we're using a classification, still a ketogenic diet. Um, so for keto diets, I mean, I know some clients I've had in the past who have used them, and, you know, it's worked pretty good for them. We had to modify their exercise, so they're not doing a ton of high-intensity stuff. They're taking longer rest periods if they're doing weight training. So there are adjustments that you would need to make uh, with it. But it can work. You know, again, it goes back to a lot of times I'll ask them, what are kind of your favorite foods? And if they're like, you know, fatty steak and butter and bacon, yeah, a ketogenic diet might be pretty good for you. If it's, you know, bagels, croissants, and fresh fruit, yeah, a ketogenic diet may not be a good place for you to start. Understood, understood. And like you said, you, you basically mix it all up on, on with your practice, right? I mean, you basically go on a client-by-client -client basis. I mean, is that basically how your specific practice works? Yeah, so everything I do on an individual level is, you know, individualized to that person. And, you know, I have had some people that have done a ketogenic diet. I've had people do longer fasting periods. I've had, you know, you know, CrossFit competitors eating 530 grams of carbs a day. Jeez. You know, it just depends upon, you know, who they are or what they're doing. And also how do they respond to it? You know, is their body count going in the right direction and their health markers still good and performance is good? Yeah, they're probably doing fine. You know, and everyone's going to be a little bit different on that spectrum, too. Yep, yep. Guys, what I wanted to do right now is just so you guys know, I got to keep the lights on. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a brief break here with Dr. Mike T. Nelson. And that guy's from, I mean, I mean his show, the, the Flex Diet. I can find that on iTunes. Also, Iron Radio. I mean, a tremendous show. Dr. Lonnie Lowry and uh, Coach Phil, guys. You guys all loved him when he was on the show. And now we got, uh, we, got, we got Dr. Mike T. Nelson here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a brief break. We're going to have a quick word from one of the ladies of the happy hour. When we come back, we're going to talk with Big Mike. And what I'm going to ask him about is we got... We got some things here. We're gonna show you. Uh, we're gonna show you some of his intelligence at work. We're gonna, I'm gonna ask him a question too about the ray gun. Also, well, I mean, this man's co-authored a book. We're gonna speak about the book he's co-authored. We're gonna talk about some sleep. We're gonna talk about a couple of other things. We're here. It's the happy hour, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with Mike T. Nelson. We'll be back with you right after this short word.
Hey guys, today's episode of the Happy Hour is brought to you by Liquid IV. Liquid IV is the world's greatest hydration drink, and the best part is, it's good for you. Liquid IV is taking care of the Happy Hour Social Club members with 25% off. Wow, guys, that's a great deal. Promo code KING.HAP will save you 25%. They have great all-new flavors like guava, apple pie, watermelon, and a new Happy Hour-inspired tangerine. All these flavors are refreshing and delicious. Promo code KING.HAP will save you 25%. And speaking of refreshing and delicious, back to your host of the happy hour, King Hap. Oh, yeah. Ladies of the happy hour, as always, love these ladies. And I'll tell you what, the best part about them, they're coming, they're coming through and they're always bringing delicious discounts to you guys. And when we talk about delicious, the first thing that comes to my mind, as always, is liquid IV, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, it's like Gatorade, but it tastes better and it don't give you the nutritional information of a bottle of Windex. Go ahead and get yourself over to liquid IV. Use promo code KING.HAP. Save yourself 25%, ladies and gentlemen. Brand new this week. Just drop pina colada flavored. All natural coconut and pineapple flavors. Cream. Oh my goodness. It is fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. The brand new Pina Colada flavor. Get over there. Save yourself 25%. Promo code KING.HAP. We are back with the doctor. The doctor's in the house. Dr. Mike T. Nelson. We're, we're really happy to have you here, big man. I can't thank you enough for you know stopping by the Happy Hour Social Club. All the Happy Hour Social Club members are going to be stoked to hear this. But, I mean, so one of the things is you get out of college now. I mean, you basically, like you said, you were there for 18 years. Tell, tell, do me a favor. Enlighten us about the uh, about the active denial system here. We got the the ray gun, and now you you were actually brought in to work on this project. Yeah, so when I was doing my master's in mechanical engineering, I initially did all my classwork more in the biomechanics area, but I couldn't get any, any funding. So I went over to the Center for Biomedical Engineering, and they had a project on heat transfer, and they said, "Hey." you know, we'll give you funding for this. I'm like, great. That means I can actually finish something and graduate. <laughs> and what it was, was generating a computer model of a monkey head in front of a big microwave transmitter. So normally you think of a microwave transmitter, like your microwave that heats up food. Um, so that one operates at what's called uh, 2450 megahertz. It's a radiation that's penetrating enough so it you know, vibrates little water molecules and it heats up your food. If you take that same idea and you increase the power but change the frequency of it, so you put it up in what's called the gigahertz range, so super high frequency, your penetration depth actually goes really shallow. So on human skin, it's only like a couple millimeters. And what they wanted to use this for, which at the time when I did it was classified, was the military wanted to make what they called the ray gun. So five years after I finished and published my research, my advisor sends me this uh, little clip from the paper that says, military declassifies ray gun. He goes, yeah, this was your research project. He's like, it was so classified, we couldn't tell you it was classified. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so what the military is using it for, you're correct, it's the active denial system. So you point at a crowd of people, and it feels like your skin is being burnt by a light bulb. So it's really, really painful. But there doesn't appear to be any deep tissue heating, meaning there's no, you know, cell death, what's called necrosis. There's no damage to your skin. Um, but it's a non-lethal kind of crowd dispersion technique. And after 9-11 happened, like, you know, kind of all branches of the military wanted one of these for you know, crowd control. Um, unfortunately, it's not used all that much. There was a thing actually in the paper a couple months ago that they, there was a debate about using it for some protesters, but you can imagine that the media headline would not be very good of, wow. you know, XYZ military group uses ray gun on protesters is probably not the thing you, <laughs> you want to be known yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, U.S. military opens up uh, microwave rays on people and, you know, ray gun. Right. Yeah, that doesn't sound like it would be too fantastic. But, I mean, so this, this technology does still technically exist. It's just not used? Yeah, I did a... Uh... Some consulting for DARPA about 10 years ago. So DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. So the people who invented like GPS technology, cell phone technology. And I talked to one of the, the contractors there and I was asking them, we just got to talking about what our research was and stuff. And 
He's like, oh, yeah, I was one of the, the operators on that system. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. I said, well, why don't they use it that much? And he's like, well, the military is not really that good with non-lethal means. <laughs> true. And I'm like, probably true. I mean, you know, historically, they just there hasn't been a lot of non-lethal use in the military, period. Um, so I asked him, I said, well, if you haven't pointed at a group of people and you've got someone who's still running at you, I said, what do you do that? He's like, oh, we shoot him. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Yeah. He's like, yep. Because like, if you're in that beam, it's so painful. And if you're still coming at us, you're clearly a threat. So we'll eliminate the threat. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think about it, they're gonna run through that. Like, well, the people are running. Oh, clearly, they don't give. They don't give a rest. <laughs> they come yeah. for something. Yeah. Take them out. Yeah. But hey, I mean, I've actually, I ne- you know, just you know, getting ready for this interview, and you know, I've never even heard of this. So I, yeah. I was kind of I was kind of excited and you know called selfish. I had to bring this up on the show because I had to hear about it. So basically, this thing's almost like a big microwave that they open up and basically hit start, and it starts like cooking people where their skin starts to feel like it's cooking, and they basically disperse. Correct? Yeah, because a lot of the if you think about just touching your skin, how sensitive it is. So what happens is the beam interacts with a lot of the sympathetic the nerve endings on your skin. And because there's not much penetration depth, you don't have any real deep tissue heating. So you're not really damaging the cells, but you're interacting with the nervous system in a way that's incredibly painful. Um, Another buddy of mine, actually, he was in the military and had it tested on him. And I asked him, I said, how did it feel? He's like, like, when you're in the beam, he's like, it hurts really bad. But the beam is so concentrated that if you're on the edge of it, you can literally take like a couple of feet step to the side and you're completely out of it and you're fine. So it's a very much painful when it's happening, but it doesn't appear to be a lot of residual effects once you're outside of the beam. So basically if you leave, you'll be all right. If you stick around, it's going to kill. I mean, that's it, it almost sounds like a great idea, but I mean, thinking about a, sticking a big microwave on a bunch of people doesn't sound too good. And I don't think that would go over too good in the public guy. Right? Yeah. It's, you know, it's one of those things where if you look at the, the technology and the data on it, you know, from as far as I can tell, it's probably pretty safe. But again, I think the potential way that it could be spun by the media in a negative fashion, even if, you know, nothing, you know, happened, there's no injuries or anything like that, it's probably not going to be used a whole lot just because of that would be my guess. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's <laughs> like you said. I don't think it's exactly the most PC way of uh, crowd control. Yeah, I don't think that's, yeah. that that blow over too well. <laughs> I'll tell you that's amazing. So when you did this, right, your portion on it was basically to uh, help test it out at the beginning. Yeah. So what I was doing was doing a computer simulation of the different size transmitters. Yep. So what they did is they had some super early thermal modeling software. This was back in the late nineties. And you put together this model in the computer, and once you validate the model, make sure it runs, you can then run a whole bunch of different simulations. So I did a simulation of uh, monkey head, but then you've got different types of monkeys. You've got a sweating monkey, you've got a non-sweating monkey, you've got hairy monkey, non-hairy monkey. Maybe they're in front of a fan, right? So you've got wind, so big fan, small fan, large transmitter, small transmitter. So it allows you to run all these different scenarios and see if there is any deep tissue heating effect. And then, as far as I know, the military did validate the model, and it was uh, the experimental results of the model were actually predicted pretty accurately. So it was actually verified, last I heard. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. That is a, that, yeah. <laughs> that's a real interesting, and I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to hear it directly from you because I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. As I was hearing about the giant microwave you know, beams, I was thinking to myself, this is unbelievable. I got to ask the doctor when he comes on the show. I, I mean, I, I, like I said before, I'm, I'm stoked to have you. I was looking forward to having this interview. Guys, we're going to do this, right? I'm going to take another real, real quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some, we're going to talk about sleep here with the doctor because truthfully, on this on this uh, on this subject, I'm a hypocrite, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm gonna uh, you know I'm gonna tell the doctor what I think, and we're gonna see what Doctor Mike T. Nelson thinks about my uh, my sleep habits as well as yours. We're gonna be back in one moment, ladies and gentlemen. It's the happy hour. We'll see you right after this brief word. <laughs> Hey. 
Hey guys, the happy hour is being brought to you today by Barbell Apparel. Barbell Apparel is the official fashion provider to the Happy Hour Social Club. They have the most comfortable and best looking styles for anyone. You see King Hap on social media, he's looking as great as always. That's because our friend at Barbell are always making sure that he's looking fresh. King Hap's fashion secrets can now be yours. What's awesome is Barbell Apparel is given an additional 10% off all prices using promo code King Hap. That goes to regular and sale prices. You can't beat that. So visit barbellapparel.com and get your hands on some of the best looking and the most comfortable styles out there. Whether you're looking for casual, dress, or getting your sweat on with workout gear, Barbell Apparel is where it's at. Again, it's barbellapparel.com. Use promo code King Hap to get an additional 10% off and making sure that you're always looking great. And speaking of someone who's always looking great, back to our host of the happy hour, King Hap. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, we're here with Dr. Mike T. Nelson, and I'll tell you, Barbell Apparel, as always, is the only fashion provider in the Happy Hour Social Club. And guys, when I tell you, Barbell Apparel, promo code King Apple save you 10%. Right now, they're running some great New Year's deals over there. Get over there, guys. Grab their sales, and then go ahead and take an extra 10% off. It's almost like you're stealing from the guys over at Barbell, but don't worry about it. They love the Happy Hour Social Club. Get over there. Get yourself some stuff, guys. It is almost time for this pandemic to be over, and when we get out there, we want to make sure we're looking our best. Ah, uh, doctor, it is, it's awesome to have you here, and here's one that I know I'm going to have to eat some crow on, and I've been, I've, you know, truthfully, selfishly, I was excited to ask you about this myself, but you're big when it comes to sleep, and I know that a lot of people, especially athletes, sleep is, I, I mean, the absolute number one way to recover. Obviously, eating good, and then, and then right there, I mean, one one a is sleep for recovery. Now, if if I was to tell you, I tell everybody that they should definitely get try to get themselves eight hours a night's sleep. I personally end up around the five or six hour range, and I know that that is not enough and I, I don't practice what I preach I, I tell myself I'm too busy and that's you know that's one of my New Year's resolutions I need to make sure I you know I, I need to start you know just saying shutting off my phone shutting off my computer saying I'm going to bed and actually doing it but tell me I mean if you had to say when you're dealing with anybody who I mean myself is you know doing mixed martial arts you know some heavy lifting in the gym I mean anybody that you deal with what would you normally tell them is a good night's sleep that they should aim for every night of the week yeah, I mean, in the, you have the perfect world and you have, you know, reality. So reality is, you know, if you're getting five to six hours, you know, six and a half is better, right? So you're moving in that direction. If you could wave a magic wand and, you know, give them the ideal number, what I've seen, seven and a half to even nine and a half hours a night for some people. Um, but, you know, eight to nine, if you were to pick a number of good quality sleep, I think is, is pretty good. Yeah, and if I, I, I truthfully say to myself, you know, I find it difficult. I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning every morning. Well, my sure. alarm clock goes off to get, to, you know, to put myself to sleep at 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> I, got, I got so much to do, big man. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, how am I going to put myself to bed at 7 o'clock when I still got 55 things to do? I mean, in, in your in your daily practice, you're a, an extremely busy man. So my question, how do you actually, how could you recommend, like, are there any little cheat codes you got for the Happy Hour Social Club members? I mean, what would you suggest they do to get that extra sleep? And what would you say is a minimum maximum that people should aim for? Yeah, I mean, the minimum is probably just more than where you're at now. Yep. Um, but the trick that works pretty good is if your circadian rhythm, your sleep cycles get kind of dysregulated, usually what you'll see is people will be a little bit more tired kind of mid-afternoon, maybe even early evening, and then they kind of wake up a little bit more in the later evening. So it's harder for them to go to bed because they're like, well, I'm not really that tired now, even though, I should go to bed. Yeah. So if you get sunlight exposure in the morning without sunglasses, ideally not behind any windows, that helps reset that circadian rhythm, that sleep cycle, by the sunlight hitting the back part of your eyeball and transmitting that signal to your brain. And what happens over time is that you'll be more awake during the day 
and you'll naturally try to get more sleepy at night. And this can take, you know, ideally you would want to get 10 to 20 minutes in the morning. And this can take two, three, sometimes four weeks to try to re-regulate that system. It takes a little bit of time. Um, but I found that that works really well. Like you said, getting your, you know, cardio in the morning. Obviously, it's a little bit harder now with the light cycles being relatively short. Um, but if you can get the light in, that makes a big difference over time. Because usually the biggest problem is, well, now it's like 10 and I should go to bed, but I'm not really that tired, so I don't go to bed. And that cycle just kind of repeats itself. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of like what I get. And you know what? I do get a little, I get that little low midday. And then it's like, yeah. you know, and it's like, oh, I wish I could go to bed right now. Two, three o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, 10, 11 o'clock rolls around. And I'm like, oh, all right, I guess I should go to bed now. Um, yeah. One of the things I was going to ask you, as you said about the, uh, you know, about the sunlight in the morning, you know, without the windows. Um what about machines like the human charge and things along these lines, you know, the headphones that you put on basically that are supposed to shine into your ears or whatever? Yeah. I mean, are these are these machines proven or are they gimmick? What would you say in your opinion? Uh, I mean, I have the human charger. There's, there's some data on it. I would say the data is still kind of preliminary. And the little bit that I understand about it is that it appears to regulate through a different system. Uh, it's not a kind of melatonin type based system. So it might be useful. I mean, I've used it off and on primarily just uh, for travel a lot. Um, you can also get uh, other lights like red light spectrum, uh, kind of full spectrum uh, UV lights. Those can be helpful too. I think like one of them is a Philips blue light is a kind of more popular one. So if you're in a climate or in an area where you have to get up super early, you can use something like that to try to get a little bit more of that blue light, that full spectrum light um, into your eyes. And then obviously the opposite at night is good. You know, turning down overhead lights, you know, lower lights, yellow lights, you know, wearing kind of orange colored glasses can help as long as you're getting the ones that are kind of filtering out more of that blue light tends to be the more awakening spectrum. Now, I, I, one of the things I, a lot of times, people, you know, people kind of laugh at me, too, because here at the uh, Wikipedia Studios and Lounge, I have uh, red light therapy. Is this something that you, yeah. you, you promote? Because, I mean, truthfully, I know that it, um, you know, it basically it's it's good for, it's it's very good for, like, skin, you know, and here being in, you know, being in uh, Boston, as you are in Minnesota, I mean, it's tremendous that yeah. just a couple of weeks ago, I had another uh, fitness professional, Sarah Seba, on from, uh, on from uh, Minnesota as well. But um, one right. of the things, yeah, she's she's fantastic. Actually, she's a running coach right down uh, right down near you in uh, Minnesota. But um, one of the things I was going to say, Doc, is that I use red light therapy here at the uh, Wicked Big Studios and Lodge, and I, I always tell people it's really good for uh, wound healing. You know, um, actually, I had a burn on my arm. You know. Uh, on my tattoo, so I was basically using it. I, you know, I go in the little booth that we have set up here for that. One of the things I was going to ask you is, I mean, would you recommend such therapy? And then uh, on top of that, I mean, what would you say are some of the benefits that you recommended for to the Happy Hour Social Club members? Yeah, I mean, I think it can be beneficial. Beneficial. Um, I have a red light uh, therapy device uh, from, I think it's uh, Red Light Therapy actually, um, but there's different ones. It's normally a red spectrum, and there's something called NAR, or near-infrared. Yep. And if you look in the literature, there's some pretty good data showing that it can help uh, performance, as you mentioned, uh, may have collagen effects, depending upon what spectrum you're looking at. Um, there hasn't been too much looking at circadian or sleep regulation, but we do know sunrise and sunset tends to be a little bit more in that red spectrum. So one of the things I've kind of hypothesized is that if you're going to use it, you know, doing it around sunlight and sunset might be a little bit better if you're allowing your eyes to be exposed to it. Um, but again, it's, you know, percentages in terms of athletic performance, you're, you're looking at single digits. So it's not a massive effect, but, you know, there is some pretty good data on it. And people want to look it up, you can look up red light therapy or low level laser, or the technical term is also uh, photobiomodulation, kind of the overarching term that <laughs> people want to do their their own research and they like big fancy geeky terms. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're if you're if you're Dr. Mike T. Nelson, you look that up. If you're if you're King, you look up red light therapy. <laughs> 
And one of the other things I, uh, that I've, I've heard about red light therapy that I throw out there to everybody is that it actually has been, uh, t- it's actually been shown to promote collagen, uh, to build collagen in the skin and things, you know, and diminish wrinkles as well. That's something that a lot of the females actually, you know, when they uh, hear that, they get excited about. So if that is accurate, you know, that's something that uh, obviously anybody that gets around our age can go ahead and take advantage of. Wouldn't you say, Doc? Yeah, and, you know, the nice part is the units are a little bit more expensive, but, you know, once you have it, you know, they last for quite a while. There's no other, you know, ongoing expense, yeah, too. No so maintenance. Yeah, it'd be basically yeah. electricity to run it and then, you know, some, you know, a, a rag and some cleaning away, but down. That's about it, right? Yeah. And truthfully. So, yep. I mean, guys, you know I love it. You see sometimes I post a picture or two on uh, Instagram, and, you know, guys, it's, it's in my opinion, it's beneficial. And, you know, one of the other things, like I said, I do actually, sitting right here on the uh, Wicked Big Studios Lounge desk, I do have my human charger as well. I haven't noticed that it gave me, when I did use it, I've been off and on, like you said, Doc, but um, I never noticed it gave me any kind of jolt. You know, that midday lull for me does still sit there. And, I mean, maybe that's just something that, as you get to, you know, as you get to, you know, age 40 and on, you, that's when you realize that, uh, you know, maybe that midday lull is kind of, you know, a little bit of something that's going to stick around, whether depending upon, you know, fitness and nutrition, how, you know, intense it's going to be is basically a different story. I mean, that's my opinion. I think that everybody, as you get older, if you're not getting the proper amount of sleep, you're always going to see that little uh, lull midday. I mean, would you think that that comes with not getting the full eight hours? Yeah, that's usually the first thing I look at. Um, is sleep. So someone says, yeah, mid afternoon, I just kind of get a lot more tired. I drink more coffee. Then the first thing I'm going to look at even before exercise and nutrition is actually what is their, their sleep. And if they're hitting, you know, kind of like yourself, five to six hours a night, hey, if we can kind of bump that up to maybe six and a half or seven hours, or even with some clients, I've told them just actually sleep in on the weekend. So if you go to bed, you know, it's your normal time, say Friday night, but you can sleep in on Saturday and Sunday, you know, play around with doing that. And as long as you're not pushing your bedtime even later, you know, I think that may be a benefit of getting a little bit more, more sleep at least two days out of the week. Hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, I actually usually take advantage of that. People know not to call me before like 10 a.m. on the weekends. Or I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I turn into like a, a wolf or something. I'm not I'm not exactly too friendly in the mornings. People know that. I'll, I mean, that's good information. I'm happy to hear it. I mean, truthfully, on top of on top of being a doctor, and I have mean, 18 years of learning in the books, my man. I mean, you also, I mean, technically, you wrote the book on sleep, no? I mean, t- tell me a little bit about Mr. Mole. Uh, how's Mr. Mole? Well, how did Mr. Mole come to be? Yeah, so my wife and I wrote a book called Mr. Mole Goes to Sleep. And our thought pattern was, how do we educate people more on the importance of sleep? And most people know it's important, but, you know, getting them to change habits with sleep is very hard. So we thought, well, what if we write a children's book that parents will read to their kids, but our little secret motive is that it could be useful for the parents in addition to the kids. So my wife wrote the the main part of the text, which is very kind of whimsical, Dr. Seuss-like, so it's a very kid-focused story. And in the middle, I kind of put more of a, a technical, like, three-phase approach of how you could uh, start to improve your sleep. So our hope was that, you know, parents will start reading it to their kids because they'll usually prioritize their kids over themselves a lot of times. And then as they're reading it multiple times, because kids like hearing, you know, similar stories a lot before bed, that, oh, oh, wow, maybe, oh, this sleep thing is kind of important. Maybe maybe I should be working on this. Yes, maybe I should so, be paying attention, right? I mean, yeah. And I mean, so how long ago does this book come out? I mean, this is this is something that's fairly recent, but at the same time, I mean, it's been out there, it's been successful, I got a lot of good reviews on the book. But um, this is something that's still available over on your website, correct? Yeah, they can get it through the website or just drop me an email. It's been out for about a year, and then uh, my wife's uh, nephews and nieces did all the artwork for it. So we had them, you know, do little pictures of of Mr. Mole. So all their artwork is in there too, and they're of various different ages. So it was all uh, hand-drawn by them too, which was very cool. 
That's that's pretty <laughs> that is pretty awesome. Honestly, I mean, I, I was you know I, when I seen it, I was like, wow, this is tremendous. And then I seen you wrote it with your wife, and I mean, she's actually very very nice. And so I was like, wow, this is awesome, guys. What I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna put in the show notes. If you want to take a look at Mr. Mole goes to sleep, that that's also gonna be in the show notes along with uh, Instagram and the uh, website over to mytnelson.com, guys. Get over there. What we're gonna do, guys? We're gonna take one last very brief break when we. Come back we're gonna talk with mike we're gonna have last call with mike also we're gonna talk about the newsletter and i mean going from there i mean truthfully guys i i'm i'm pumped that he came on the show and he's happy to be here that you know everybody's got to make sure they get over to instagram give him a follow at dr mike t nelson on instagram we'll be right back after this very la- our very last break of the day guys we got last call coming in we got mike t nelson coming back to you in just one moment stay tuned <laughs> Hey guys, today's episode of Happy Hour is being brought to you free of charge by our friends at MLO Shoes. MLO is the official footwear company of the Happy Hour Social Club. If you know King Hap, he's very serious about his sneakers. MLO not only has the looks and comfort he demands, but also is affordably priced and can fit any budget. But as always, King Hap has your back. Promo code King Hap will save you an additional $10 off your first pair. Get over to mlo.shoes.com and you can look like a million bucks and spend well under $100. Don't forget, use promo code KINGHAP and save an additional $10. And now, back to a man that we all know always looks like a million bucks, our host of the happy hour, King Hap. I love the ladies of the happy hour. Guys, because of the outstanding Outstanding, outstanding support that you showed. MLO Shoes, just so you know, going forward, you're not going to just save $10 off your first pair, guys. We have actually, this has been increasing. They are Tickle Pink with the Happy Hour Social Club. They are now the official shoe provider and sneaker provider to the Happy Hour Social Club. MLO Shoes, promo code KINGHAP will save you 10%, and that's forever. You guys, anytime you want, get over to the website, save yourself 10%, get to sell some of the, I mean, freshest shoes that are out there, and you know what? You're going to look like a million bucks, but you ain't even going to spend a hundred. Get yourself over there right now. There's a huge sale going on. King Hap actually will save you 10% on top of that, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, what else can we ask for? These guys are taking really good care of us. Speaking of what else we could ask for, Dr. Mike, tell me, what else can we get from you tonight? I mean, tell me, is there, is there, I mean, you got a, you also got a newsletter that comes out day, I mean, pretty much daily. I mean, at least once a week, this thing's coming to my inbox now, and Truthfully, it's loaded with information. I mean, is this uh, something that's you know gonna we're gonna see more and more of going forward, or what? Yeah, I tend to do almost daily, so probably six days a week. I write for the newsletter. That's where most of my content actually uh, goes out. So yeah, it's been super fun. I've been doing it for uh, several years, and if yeah, people are interested, they can just go to the website mikeynelson.com. There'll be a place to sign up for free. Yeah, guys, this is, like I said, it's a free service, and you're going to get a boatload of information that will help you with your New Year's resolutions and also just help you with everyday stuff. So, I mean, get over, guys, get over to MikeTNelson.com. Go ahead make sure you get the uh, – go ahead and register. And you know what? He's going to know when the Happy Hour Social Club members get over to his, uh, you know, his Instagram page and the uh, newsletter. Show him some love and show him what we're all about here in the Happy Hour Social Club. So, big man, I got one last question for you, right? And, and then, you know, we're, we're going to get to last call, and, we'll go, and I'll let you go because you've been more than generous with your time, and I appreciate that. But tell me, how is it working with those psychopaths over on Iron Radio like Coach Phil? I mean, you guys have a fun time, and that comes out every Sunday, correct? Yeah, we get a new episode every Sunday night. And, uh, yeah, I've known Lonnie and Phil for almost close to 15 years now, maybe, I think, so... 
yeah, I've been down to Phil's gym and, you know, trained there and hung out with him multiple times. So it's, uh, yeah, it's always fun. <laughs> he's, he's, he's an adventure. I'll tell you the goats and everything. Oh my yeah. God. I'll tell you, he was, you know, he was a lot of fun <laughs> on the show too. And, uh, it, but I'll tell you, Lonnie, I mean, you basically, you, you know, you got, you and Lonnie are the brains and then you got, you know, Phil, who's basically, he's the, he's the, uh, you know, the meathead of the show. You know what I'm saying? It's basically, it's a yeah. great mix and, you know, you're basically getting it from every end of the spectrum. And I mean, truthfully, it's a fun take. And I mean, Iron Radio, I, like I said, was absolutely, it was the, the first, the first two, uh, Podcast I ever downloaded was the Mike Dolce Show and Iron Radio. Iron Radio was actually number oh, wow. one. So those are the only two That's I listened awesome. to at first. And I, it's, yeah, I mean, honestly, I still download it. I don't get to listen to it as much as I'd like to because I'm usually busy with a lot. I mean, we got the we got the Happy Hour King Hat Podcast, Happy Hour Fantasy on Wednesday nights, ladies and gentlemen. And that now we got the Happy Hour Sportsman coming up with the whole uh, roundtable. I'll tell you, I've been, I've been so busy with that. I got to catch up on some Iron Radio uh, episodes. But... I mean, you must have a tremendous amount of fun doing that show, correct? Oh yeah, it's always always super fun, and uh, yeah, it's been a good time, and yeah, yeah, we haven't missed the uh, episode in like ten years. I've been on there for I think around four years now, but. Yeah, they haven't missed an episode in almost a decade. So yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. awesome, man. I mean, you want to talk about consistency? <laughs> that's that's pretty yeah. good. They seem pretty uh, diligent about it, and they they really like doing it. I mean, you know, Phil loves his lifting. I mean, Lonnie is. I mean, obviously, he's a, a former professional bodybuilder as well. I mean, you got you got almost twenty years of schooling behind it. So there's a lot of great information that comes out of that. As long as the as well as the Flex Diet Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, get over onto iTunes. Give these guys a five-star review you know what i'm gonna have to make sure that i when i get done here i leave uh the flex diet a five-star review guys well, thank there. you absolutely you guys get over there on itunes you gotta leave one for the happy hour make sure you leave one for the flex diet guys you'll be able to read mine on there ah talk to mike it's been it's been amazing having you here i'll tell you it's that time of the night it's last call ladies and gentlemen last call with dr mike t nelson as always is brought to you by Clearwater Distillery. Clearwater Distillery is the official top shelf alcohol of the Happy Hour Social Club, ladies and gentlemen. On top of it all, it is the most delicious small batch alcohol in the world today. We have big news coming from Clearwater. We're going to have Matt O'Claire on the show again. He got, we got big news to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you stay tuned. It's going to be amazing. Ah, Dr. Mike, I can't thank you enough for being here. It's last call. You got anything left for the Happy Hour Social Club members in? Where can they find you, big man? Yeah, the best place, as you mentioned, is on Instagram, Dr. Mike C. Nelson. And then most of my stuff goes out through the newsletter, which they can hop on for free at MikeCNelson.com. So... Thank you so much for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank everybody who tuned in today and everybody who's working on those uh, you know, New Year's resolutions. Anything we can help you with, you can get over to the Happy Hour Social Club on Facebook. You know we got all the discounts for you. Elite Sweet Donuts, we didn't talk about them today. Chili Sleep Technology, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's over there with your discounts. Get over there and you know, give it a like, and I'll tell you what, guys. I can't thank you enough for being here, and you know I love every single one of you. Stay safe, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, uh, Dr. Mike, one last thank you from me. And I just want to say, you know, everybody, everybody's going to enjoy this show. And I could, if you could tell your lovely wife, I said thank you as well, if you don't mind. Will do. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right, guys. And what I'll always love to do is I always love to leave you with a little, a little something. So here you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Happy Hour Abyss version 2. Yeah. Yeah. A best happy hour, happy hour, a best hip hop.com. Hey, have a Sports fanatics applauding at the matches. Picking winners when we sift through the brackets. Yeah, turf green like a bag of sour. We're gonna talk in that podcast is the happy hour. Meta come to the game fully geared. Who would dare? Benny Beast most is the rookie year. Yeah, little fact for the lightning round. This is Title Town, the place where all of the fire's found. We attend games on a record. I heard more goals than a motivation seminar. Yeah, stay charged like a visa. So many bad calls. No, we stopping by the most bleachers. So 
click play and just soak it up this is happy hour but not the same as your local pub sports talk here the pro shows a must so scroll like the page call the happy hour social club boss moves so you know your boy paid them dues front row you can see us through the paper view fights on watching them box like big parcels the so mma know that the art is mixed martial listen guests you better play your best you playing fast and better go take a breath and just play the bench yeah Clap paw with his two hands. You've been true fans, speeding stats off the newsstand.